You think she's cheating on her spouse with someone from a cheating spouse support group? Multiple dense lesions. MS. Faith is not a disease. I can't move my arm. Your friends are not praying hard enough. Smiling through losing the ability to use your arm. That is so dark and yet so interesting. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 7, Episode 8, Small Sacrifices. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 house videos. This will be episode 140. Let's see if we can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London. But hello, get him down. 33 year old male with hemoptysis, fever, puncture wounds are from a crucifixion. When the doctor said she had two months to live, that's when I made my bargain. Three weeks later, she was cancer free. So how do you think I was cured? Maybe you were misdiagnosed in the first place. I was buying an engagement ring. I'm gonna propose to Sam at the wedding. What's it mean when somebody takes their cell phone into the bathroom and they're taking a shower? She has a meeting today at 1.30 at a hotel. So what looks like an infection but doesn't test like one? We think you have Rhodococcus equi, a horse infection. It's pretty rare in humans, but easily treatable with antibiotics. Heavy metal poisoning fits. Heavy metal it is. Do a home search and a peripheral smear. This patient made a promise with God to crucify himself every year he's alive if his daughter's cancer disappeared, and it did. Pure cruelty. Thing is, we have stories like this all the time and they can be incredibly dangerous. Why? Well, because cancers spontaneously regress unexpectedly in around one in 80,000 cases. That's a big deal as there are around 20 million new cancer cases diagnosed every single year worldwide. So even though spontaneous regression sounds incredibly rare by stats, that means there are still around 250 cases of cancers mysteriously disappearing every single year. Does that matter? Yes, of course it does. People who get diagnosed with cancer understandably try all kinds of things to get rid of them. Castor oils, fasting diets, and deworming drugs. If someone tries those things and gets a spontaneous regression, you can see how they might get absolutely convinced that it was their actions that got rid of it. Of course, then having castor oil seems a much more humane option than chemotherapy, but it isn't since the previous effectiveness won't get replicated. Our patient may not have time to replicate his crucifixion though if we don't find out what's wrong with him, so what's going on? He's had fever, coughing up blood, now losing his teeth. His initial infection screen was negative and we know he's working with animals. The team think it's something called Rhodococcus equi, which is a rare infection that mainly causes pneumonia in horses. That amount of blood though surely couldn't be from a pneumonia. Rhodococcus also wouldn't cause the teeth to fall out. So what else could this be? Heavy metals are interesting because you could potentially argue that it was environmental exposure of his daughter that cleared her brain cancer. Could solving the cancer mystery also solve his case? In all fairness, the working with animals part might have exposed him to anthrax, which could cause all his symptoms as well. They probably wouldn't have checked for it on their preliminary infection screen either. TB and brucellosis could also potentially fit here and would be more difficult to diagnose, but less spicy. I'd want to investigate with anthrax and TB testing and also have an x-ray then take it from there. Either way though, I've got enough to go for anthrax as my first diagnostic guess. Now let's get more clues. I guess worry is good for the waistline. Starvation. I feel like because of malnutrition. Saw you today. The hotel. Are you checking up on me? I made a new friend in a support group for people with unfaithful spouses. Well, you seem to be feeling better. <sighs> Not really. My legs are killing me. Why are you smiling? Not smiling. Pseudobulbar affect. He's feeling one emotion while unknowingly expressing another one. Get an MRI of his brain. Let's see if we can find God. You think she's cheating on her spouse with someone from a cheating spouse support group? Multiple dense lesions. MS. Faith is not a disease. I can't move my arm. Your 
friends are not praying hard enough. Smiling through losing the ability to use your arm. That is so dark and yet so interesting. Now the team found some lesions on his brain that they thought were MS related, but that wouldn't cause sudden paralysis like this. We also know now that he was malnourished and bleeding while losing his teeth, so I'm surprised they haven't mentioned scurvy. What is that? Well, it's a vitamin C deficiency that old sailors used to get because they wouldn't be able to store fresh fruit for all the time they were at sea. This led to swollen gums, small bleeds under the skin, leg pain, and irritability. It can even cause yellowing of the skin or whites of the eyes, and it's so easy to fix because you simply replace the vitamin C and all is well again. The thing is though, leave it untreated and it can be fatal, the perfect house diagnosis. The issue though is that it wouldn't usually cause the scan appearances we saw of the brain, so what could that be? Well, metabolic could potentially be adult onset leukodystrophy, infectious could be HIV, HTLV1, or toxoplasmosis. Oh, that actually works so well. Degenerative could be motor neuron disease, but that could be very tough to treat. Neoplastic could be lymphoma of the brain and body. Inflammatory could be Bechet's disease. Toxic could be cadmium poisoning. Mm, to be fair, now that everything's come together and we know he's had exposure to animals, toxoplasmosis does seem to fit. It can even cause tooth loss as well. All right, toxoplasmosis has to be my second diagnostic guess. Let's get more clues. He has MS, but not the friendly Mr. Rogers MS. Marburg MS? Stem cell treatment. Our patient's right at the Pope. He's never going to consent to that. Confirm Marburg. All five patients were terminal. She exceeded the dosing protocols to try to save their life. You'd have done the same. The only reason these two are getting married is to throw an obnoxious gal and make the rest of us feel unworthy. Accepting this treatment is an insult to God. He needs to see his daughter and tell her he's dying because God doesn't want him to take his medicine. Get her in here. And you're my daddy, you can't die. If God could do this, I hate God. What are you doing, man, this time? I didn't come here to get laid either. I went through your emails. You tell him things that you've never told me. You are having an affair, an emotional one. It all looks lovely tonight. Thank you. I meant me. Our beliefs define us. If we lose him, who are we? And Taub is feeling the direct consequences of losing those beliefs. He definitely doesn't like it when the infidelity train is docking at the opposite station. It is interesting though because she's having a conversation whereas Taub was more about the physical and less the emotional. Why is that interesting? Well, because Grantvet and colleagues showed that the perceived severity of infidelity is different depending on who is looking at it. Males find physical infidelity more serious and for females, it's emotional infidelity that hurts more. The reason why is under contention, but the leading theories are that a worst case scenario for men is raising a child who isn't actually theirs. For women, it could be that the man withdraws his support and resources in helping to nurture the child. Either way, a child is about to lose her dad if we don't crack this, so what is going on? Maybe he does have Marburg MS like the team think, which is a rare, incredibly aggressive version where people can die within weeks without any signs of getting better. The thing is, even with treatment, most of these patients die within one to two years. In real life, it has responded to stem cell therapy in some cases, but the team have it wrong because they say embryonic stem cells rather than autologous ones, it's autologous transplants that have some reports of working where the stem cells are harvested from the individual themselves. Well, why would someone need their own stem cells, would you say? Well, MS and particularly Marburg MS is an autoimmune disease. So what the team do is they wipe out the immunity with a mix of plasmapheresis and hardcore immunosuppression. They then reinfuse the patient's own stem cells that they harvested before the treatment to help replenish the blood's immunity. That's quite different to what's being described here, although it's still pretty cool that the writers knew about that. I understand that they may have had to change the embryonic type though to bring in the whole religious controversy. In all fairness, we don't have many more clues on the patient here, and I still think toxoplasmosis could work pretty well, although if it does, then immunosuppressants will make him way, way worse. Let's see what happens. I'm asking you to stop this. No. He will marry before. 
1987 for six days. Well played. Sam, will you marry me again? The five cases. I not only agree with what you do, I admire it. I'm on your side. I can't believe this. All those hurt feelings, they never really went away. That makes a lot more sense. Came from a wedding. I had to run a pet scan. Tell you've given up on me. I have. That scan was for your daughter. Cancer never went away. Looks like God broke your deal. You're a bastard. Do whatever you want of me. I'll show you your daughter's pet scan. It's clean. This is your MRI. Shows incremental improvement. There is no God. He's truly merciful. We can't work like this. I know where this is going. And I don't want to go there again. You're quitting. I just have to suspend my cynicism and believe. I'm sorry. I won't lie to you again. Thank you. There is all of zero chance I believe House will never lie to Cuddy again. Also, it was MS. I could have easily got that from the bleeding lungs, falling teeth and fevers. Oh yeah, all those classic symptoms of MS. Honestly, find me a doctor that can genuinely crack these and I'll find you a doctor who isn't one. <laughs> Still an interesting episode, the way they navigate the story and intertwine the religious side of it. The patient kept his convictions though, even when challenged. 7.6 out of 10 entertainment, 6.3 out of 10 accuracy, 6.8 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode makes full sense when you watch a previous one where a two century old puzzle should have stayed buried.